Okay, uh, hi everyone. So this video here is going to focus on uh, another reaction of alkynes. Uh, this is hydroboration of alkynes. Okay, so it's similar to the hydroboration of alkenes that we've seen before. Uh, now, what happens in this in this case here is uh, actually before I forget. So this is again section nine point seven, the end of section nine point seven. This is a continuation of uh, the hydration of alkynes, the same topic. Okay, so section nine point seven in the textbook, and what this reaction does is it converts alkynes into uh, aldehydes and I think I'm going to make it a little bit more specific it converts terminal alkynes into aldehydes okay if it's an internal alkyne internal alkyne would give you ketone products in this particular case so you won't get an aldehyde it's going to be a uh, ketone so I think if you were to like uh, if you had to like contrast this to a reaction then uh, terminal alkynes when you do a hydration under acidic conditions gives you ketones terminal alkynes when you do a hydroboration under and this is under basic conditions you get uh, an aldehyde product you know so that may be something to keep in mind so again uh, to give you an overview and then go into the mechanism so if we start with a terminal alkyne we have a hydrogen here when you do a hydroboration oxidation again done in steps so let's say bh3 thf uh, in thf as a solvent and then uh, oxidation using peroxide and base so basic oxidation and we do that our product here is going to be we have the R and then we have two carbons after that so our product is going to be an aldehyde so we have one two this is our first carbon this is our second carbon beyond R okay so our product here is an aldehyde okay now because an alkyne has two pi bonds okay so in principle uh, you could add the borane twice to the alkyne you could add it once and you could add it another time and we're going to see that later okay during the mechanism to avoid that second addition have from happening we usually use uh, bulky boranes for do, doing these reactions okay so we use some bulky boranes and I just want you to remember well you can use the BH3 THF generally but I think there's one borane that I would like you to maybe like at least be able to identify which is uh, a dicyamyl borane okay uh, this is this is this molecule uh, extra carbon uh, just be able to identify, you know, so it has like uh, bulky R groups on it. That's what it is. Okay, so this molecule is a diamyl borane. It's a secondary amyl group. Okay, that's what it is. So it's a diamyl borane, and that's one molecule. Now in your textbook, there's another molecule called 9BBN, uh, but I think we can deal with this. This should be enough, you know. So be just be able to like identify that this is again treat this as an R group. So it's a bulky R group that's what it is and you have one borane so and that's all you need for doing one step in this reaction one boron hydrogen bond okay so the dicyamyl borane is 
like one of the reagents that's used. Like another reagent that is used, uh, I will not go into the structure, but you can look it up uh, in the textbook. It's called 9BBN. Okay, 9BBN is another boron reagent that's used for doing these reactions. So let's get into the mechanism uh, without further delay. And again, uh, mechanism, we are only going to look at the mechanism of the hydroboration step. We will, uh, uh, we will look at some parts of this oxidation, the hydroboration, uh, the oxidation part of the mechanism, okay? So again, the mechanism here is similar to the hydroboration of alkenes to some extent, there are some similarities. So we start with an alkyne, and the borane, we can use BH3, so the borane comes in. Uh, and again, it is a it is a concerted sort of a process. So the pi bond attacks the boron because the boron is electrodeficient, it's electrophilic, the pi bond attacks, one of the pi bonds attacks the boron. Simultaneously, there's a hydride attack on the other carbon of this triple bond. And this would go through an intermediate, or sorry, a transition state where the boron and the hydrogen are both connected to that alkyne and through this intermediate, so you basically finish the electron push. So I've used dotted arrows here to say that, okay, all of those bonds are either forming or breaking. And then we're basically trying to complete those electron pushes. And so this would give us an alkene with BH2 connected to the less substituted carbon and hydrogen connected to the more substituted carbon between these two. Okay, so hydrogen to the more substituted, BH2 to the less substituted. So very similar to what we saw in the alkyne hydration case. And from here, when we do the oxidation step with base and hydrogen peroxide, so very similar to what happens in uh, the alkyne hydration, we will not go into the details of that, but the BH2 group is replaced by uh, a hydroxyl group, okay? Uh, not this hydroxide though, okay? Uh, the BH2 group is replaced by a hydroxyl. There are like a sequence of events. We are not showing that, you know? So eventually it gets replaced by uh, a, a hydroxyl group. So we're going to get this. And notice what we've made now. Uh, what we've got here, this is an enol because this is an alkene and it's an alcohol. So based on functional groups, this is an enol. And what we saw under the acid catalyzed hydration is that the enol tautomerizes to the keto form. And enols can also tautomerize under basic conditions, okay? So because all of this, this is our second step, this was our first step here. Because all of this is going on under basic conditions, what happens is this enol can react with more base. So another molecule of the hydroxide it can come and deprotonate the enol. It will grab that proton and it will give us the conjugate base of the enol. So we'll get a species, now I'm going to get rid of all of these hydrogens. It will give us a species like that. And plus there's water, okay? 
Now this species here, okay, this oxygen had two lone pairs. This species here is resonance stabilized. So push the electrons down over there. Those electrons come here. So there is resonance and it would give us a double bond over there and a negative charge on this carbon. So this is resonance. This species here that we've made, which is, it's an enolate, uh, again, it is just a resonance form of that. So that's an enol. The conjugate base of an enol is called an enolate. So this is just a resonance form of that. So these are both called enolates. Okay, so they are enolate. The conjugate base of an enol is an enolate. Uh, so the enolate, because all of this is going on under aqueous conditions, there's base, so there is water here. So the enolate comes and takes a proton from a water molecule and it will give us an aldehyde. So what we've made now is an aldehyde and plus we get the base back. So in some sense, again, you know, uh, I mean, we got the aldehyde back here. So notice that uh, I've skipped showing a hydrogen here, but that hydrogen is there. So that's how we get our aldehyde uh, product, okay? So in some sense, again, this is, again, like a tautomerization that's going on. You have an enol, and what we've got here, we can call this our keto product. So it's not a ketone, but it has a carbonyl functional group, which is a keto group. So this is a keto product. So an enol product becomes a keto product. So through that keto enol tautomerization that's going on here, we get the aldehyde product. So what we are looking at here is enol going to keto under basic conditions, and then we've seen enol going to keto under acidic conditions in the hydration example, okay? So that's the mechanism of uh, 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 hydroboration of alkynes, hydroboration oxidation of alkynes. Uh, now we've skipped part of the mechanism here, okay? So we didn't get into the details uh, again, you know, again, we didn't get into the details of how this boron is replaced by that hydroxyl group. Now, if you're interested, we can talk during office hours, but if not, we're just going to leave it here because again, it shows us why uh, the boron goes to the less substituted carbon, which is identical to the alkene case, sterics, the reason here. And then, uh, uh, and then we have the enol tautomerizing to the keto form, which is a carbonyl in this particular case. Okay, so let's look at a few examples now. Uh, so some examples here. So let's say we have an alkyne like this, and we take this alkyne and we do a hydroboration on it. So BH3, THF, with THF as a solvent, and second, we do base with H2O2 with the hydrogen peroxide. This is the more substituted carbon. That's the less substituted carbon. The more substituted carbon becomes a CH2. The less substituted carbon becomes the aldehyde. So this for place, we have one, two, just to number the carbon atoms, we have one, two, three, four, and five. So I'm not counting them as I would count during nomenclature. One, two, three, four, five. So the fourth carbon becomes CH2. Fifth carbon is the aldehyde. So we have one, two, three, four, five. The fifth carbon is an aldehyde. That would be our product. Another example. Let's use this example from the cyclohexane that we used the alkyne based on the cyclohexane. So when we do the same reaction here, BH3 dot THF 
second hydroxide with peroxide again the terminal carbon here that becomes the aldehyde so our product cyclohexane with one carbon and then aldehyde so aldehyde over there that will be our product now as i showed earlier if we have an example where the alkyne is internal okay so this is an internal alkyne these two were both terminal alkynes okay this is an internal alkyne when you have an internal alkyne now the keto group carbonyl group would be formed at either of these carbon atoms so we have one two three four five and six so that means when we do this reaction the same conditions let's say okay uh, let's be doing the same condition as above when we do this reaction we're going to get two three four so there could be a carbonyl at four and then we have five and six so we have five six and plus we would have one two three four five and six okay so one two three four five six one two three four five six so notice how when you have an internal alkyne you do not get an aldehyde as a product you get a ketone and you're going to get a mixture of ketones unless your alkyne is symmetrical okay if it's not a symmetrical alkyne you're going to get mixture of products but when you have a terminal alkyne then you get aldehydes as products and that's where this reaction now differs from uh, the hydration of alkynes which is acid catalyzed in that particular case we get a ketone product from a terminal alkyne and we get ketone product from internal alkynes but in this case we get a ketone product from uh, sorry we get an aldehyde product from uh, terminal alkynes we get ketone products from internal alkynes okay so those are just some uh, examples to demonstrate the reaction and i think we're going to stop the video right over there so please go ahead practice you know do some of the homework you know and keep practicing that's the only way to uh, be able to like recognize these reagents and actually identify these reactions uh, when you're testing okay